The Space Race. Instead of starting in 1962 with JFK's famous speech, it actually started at the end of World War II. The US and the Soviet Union are fighting to become the biggest nation. In 1945, soon after World War II ended, NASA and the Soviet Union began recruiting German rocket engineers to help them achieve space exploration. So America really wanted to land on the moon uh, because it was difficult. So during the space race, the Soviet Union took an early lead, which meant that America were definitely behind. Um, so one of the reasons for setting the target as the moon was because it was so difficult to get there. It gave them time to catch up with the uh, Soviet Union who were ahead and overtake them because they knew that the Soviets were not ready to do that themselves. Like Christopher Columbus and his voyage to the New World, NASA and the Soviet Union planned to go where no man had gone before, space. However, the UK was also doing rocket engineer work at the time, but didn't have the funding behind it to carry on any missions or research. The Apollo astronauts day to day, they were always very, very busy. There was a lot to do, um, but it wasn't always uh, the most comfortable experience. The food that they ate was normally um, uh, had to be rehydrated. It wasn't always the most uh, flavoursome. Uh, it was more to do with keeping them alive and making sure they had the right calorie intake. But one of the main things that people always want to know about is going to the toilet in space. Uh, and this was quite an unpleasant experience throughout the Apollo missions. So Walt Cunningham on Apollo 7 often talks about the fact that it was about a 45 minute experience. So you had to float down underneath the seats away from your other crew members for a bit of privacy. Um, and in the microgravity climate of space, uh, it's very difficult to go to the toilet. And they pretty much just had bags. That's all they had to use. During the Cold War, the leaders of both countries were JFK and Leonid Brezhnev. Each devised a plan to get a man on the moon. This has never been done before. To see live an event on a TV of that magnitude was just awesome. We've never, never experienced anything like that before. But you understand the, what was going on, but to actually see it live and to see a person's foot being put on the moon, it was just unbelievable. Because we could hardly believe what we've seen on the TV. Apollo 11, uh, the crew was Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and of course the person that people often forget is Mike Collins, who stayed behind in the command module orbiting the moon whilst Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin went down to the surface. But those three people were backed up by at least 400,000 other people um, who were working in America at the time who had been involved in terms of being the contractors to build the spacecraft component parts, um, as well as uh, all of the mission controllers who helped make sure that things um, worked and everyone knew what was happening and all the mathematicians and scientists that backed up. So it's often said that 400,000 people helped put Neil Armstrong on the moon. The Apollo 11 mission would not have been possible without the flight directors in mission control, the Capcom that talked to the astronauts during the mission, all of the engineers that were monitoring the signals, the doctors, the trainers, people like Margaret Hamilton, who wrote the software code for the Apollo spaceship. The health implications for the Apollo crews were, were limited somewhat by the fact that none of the missions were longer than a week or two weeks worth of time spent in space. Subsequently, in low Earth orbit, we've had astronauts spending six months or more um, finding out more about the uh, effects of space flight on the human body, things like the uh, the way that without gravity working the way you have to on, on Earth, your spine's going to elongate and um, bone density and all these sort of things. For the Apollo crews um, surviving in space for a much shorter period of time, there was um, a greater exposure to radiation. They had to go through the Van Allen belts, but they wore things like dosimeters, which would um, tell them how much radiation they'd actually been exposed to. And it was it was not too much compared to what, say, somebody working in a um, a nuclear power plant might be exposed to over the course of a year. So there were no major health uh, problems for the Apollo crews. Things like the, uh, the surface of the moon and the, the moon dust that came off their suits when they were back inside their vehicles, that wasn't the most pleasant thing to breathe in. And there have been some studies subsequently that have shown um, a lot of the Apollo astronauts have had heart-related problems, but only 12 people ever walked on the surface of the moon. So it's such a small statistical sample. I don't think anyone could say that the, the flights to the moon actually had any negative impacts on their health. When finally landing on the moon, it's expected to start scientific experiments 
collecting moon rocks, surface samples and more. The journey on the, on the way to the moon no doubt was all about um, uh, preparation. So the, the general premise is that once they were launched on the Saturn V, um, they had to undock the lunar module and connect that to the command module. The command module then takes them all the way to the moon um, before two astronauts get inside the lunar module, which undocks and then goes down to the surface. Um, on the way back, I mean, a, a lot of the a lot of the work has been done to some extent, um, other than just perhaps some slight modifications to the course of the spacecraft to make sure that it's going the direction that it needs to be going to get back safely into Earth. It's a very important thing that everything is lined up correctly. The last thing you want to do is to skip off the surface of the atmosphere and go out into space because then, um, yeah, that would be a big problem for the crews. And also you, you need to come in at the right angle so that the atmosphere can slow you down, something that's called atmospheric braking. And the command module was designed in such a way that it would come in with the, uh, the flat bottom first so that that could take all of the heat that's caused as you come uh, back down through the atmosphere before the parachute eventually take over and slow them down and splash down into the ocean to be rescued. The astronauts didn't have it easy when it came to living conditions. The food that they ate had to be rehydrated. It wasn't about flavour, but more for keeping them alive. What interests most people is what it's like to go to the toilet in space. In all honesty, it's not very glamorous. All they had was a bag that they had to use in front of everyone on board. There's a lot of um, people at NASA and a lot of the astronauts who went to the moon who were really disappointed that after Apollo 17 left in 1972, no one's ever gone back. Um, part of the reason was because the, uh, the early Apollo missions were about getting there. It was all about getting there first. And then there was a lot of good science done, but they were only ever on the surface of the moon for three days as a maximum. Um, longer term stays on the moon, turning it into something that could be commercially viable is far more complicated. So after um, Apollo 17, the rest of human spaceflight um, coming up into the 21st century has been about learning to survive in space for longer periods. Uh, if we're ever going to go to Mars, if we're going to settle on the moon for any long period of time, there's a lot of things that still need to be ironed out. It was very much exploration for the crews of Apollo. <laughs>